Hello, family. Welcome back. I know it's been a long time since I've sat down and done a video. It's been about a month because we left at the very beginning of July. And so we're just now getting home from our trip where we had four different meetups. And out of those four, we were able to meet people at all of them, not as many as we had thought, but still a blessing to meet those of you who are able to show up. So thank you so much for those of you who did. It was a major blessing to meet you. Had some really cool uh, testimonies there from just the people that we were able to meet along the way. And so uh, grateful for that. But I wanted to use this video to update you guys on the Ark Encounter. We were there yesterday and we ended up staying the night up there in Kentucky and driving home this morning. It's been quite the journey, many, many miles um, overall going from Georgia to all the way to California with stops along the way. And then, you know, all the way back, kind of went in a circle um, around the U.S. But the Ark Encounter, we had put out a post that we were going there and that we could run into an anti-flat earth discussion because that was on their schedule. It literally said the night before my wife saw it online and told me that we need to pray because there's a speaker and he's going to be addressing flat earth. I already had heard from people that they are anti-flat earth, but this particular uh, segment on their schedule said that it is going to debunk the flat earth essentially. I can't remember exactly how it was worded, but this doctor um, this doctor guy, Dr. Faulkner, I don't, I don't remember his whole name, um, was going to give a presentation. And from what I've heard, uh, I don't have any verification of this, but this guy was like showing up at one of the earlier conferences that we had, the FE conferences, and was there to, I don't know, ruffle feathers. I don't know. I don't know what his agenda was um, at that point, but I'm just going to say, I'm going to try not to slander the guy. I'm just going to speak about the experience, what happened, and what happened after he was able to speak um, when there was a question and answer segment. It was something that was extremely disappointing to witness. I would say the entire experience of that place, I mean, the people that work there are nice people, but it's not a biblical place, okay? They do not believe in the firmament. I guess they think it just rained a lot <laughs> and uh, more water was created from the rain enough to flood the earth from the existing water, which makes no sense. Um, I really don't know what they think about day two of creation because on their pictures, they had um, clouds, almost like clouds were made on that day. And that's what a lot of us used to think. So I'm not dissing anybody who believes that. Uh, we do have footage of the firmament. I'm about to go and do an entire series on the unique properties and the proofs of the firmament. We need a really good video. I'm finding out that people have questions, and I want to have one place with most of the answers. Okay, we don't have all of them. This is something that's been hidden from us for well over 100 years. We've never even heard about a structure above the world or anyone believing it. You know, I didn't anyways throughout school or church, anything. So um, no blame if you don't understand it whatsoever. A lot of us have been investigating this and been very blessed to see what we've seen, but the Ark Encounter, they have no uh, belief in that whatsoever. Their belief of creation is 100% based on the words of man in this world. And I mean, they do believe that a flood happened. So, I mean, there's that. And they do have an ark for you to look at. But even the animals on the inside, when you walk in, it's dinosaurs right away. Like most of the bottom level was dinosaurs from what I recall. And I, I took a few pictures. I may add them to this video when I'm done. But there were dinosaurs not to say that there weren't some creatures that made it onto the ark that have gone extinct since. You know, there's lots of paintings of these things. I think a lot of these paintings may be pre-flood, but some of these aren't like cave drawings. They're like actual paintings. And so um, who knows? Maybe they had uh, found more complete bones. But the weird thing is we don't have any complete uh, dinosaur sets of bones together, like a whole set for one dinosaur. And the thing when you look it up on Google actually says because they washed away. I wonder what could have washed these giant bones away if it wasn't a massive flood. It's not like a bone the size of your sofa is going to get drug away uh, by some large creature because then those creatures would still be here if they're big enough to move those types of bones. Um, we have femur bones that are bigger than people, okay? And these bones, a lot of them, most of them have soft tissue. Once they are investigated and dissolved, there's soft tissue that remains. So lots of cool things about that. But anyways, to get back to the point of the speaker who talked about 
the earth being a globe. Okay. It was not a friendly environment. It was not like, well, there's these people who believe the Bible. It was, there's these conspiracy theorists who are anti-Semitic into Gnosticism and all these different things. He gave all these labels to us that were negative. And it was hurtful because I'm listening to this guy hoping he's going to go to the Bible and say, this is what the Bible says about the earth. And it's true. He said, the Bible's figurative. There's parables in all these things that we hear about creation, it's not literal. And he never used one verse, because there's not any that say the earth is in motion, okay? Um, it was all of the same proofs that we've all looked at and disproven time and time again, okay? So it was it was not a scientific, complete debunk. They didn't look at everything we've looked at. It was some of the old stuff. It's like the old debunk videos from way back in the day that we've dealt with and all the proofs we've looked at. Um, star trails making perfect circles. Um, that was one of them. Lunar eclipses. He didn't address the Selenelian eclipses or Selene Leon, however you say that word. He didn't address that type of eclipse. I've heard people say it many different ways. Um, but yeah, it was it was very disappointing his demeanor and and how he insulted us time and time again and said that the Bible, he said that it literally does not depict a flat, immovable world with a firmament above it. The Bible doesn't say that. And that was his words. He said it doesn't depict the images that we're putting out there and the Bible verses that we're putting out there. Hundreds of them, he says it doesn't depict that. And so we weren't allowed to have any video recordings during the time, or I would have recorded some of it. Uh, I did go out in the lobby because they said no cameras or videos in there. Out in the lobby, they had a TV screen, and so I took a picture of the TV screen a couple times with a couple of the slides he had up and um, was able to partake in a Q&A afterwards. And I was not surprised by the reaction I received because he was talking to a woman and telling her that plane flights make perfect sense on a globe, okay, ignoring all of the ones that we can look at on a, on a as a muffle equidistant map. And they make perfect sense, especially the emergency stops and so many other flights. I mean, it's it's ridiculous how many of them match up as well as time zones matching up with the biblical earth. But he was talking about that. And so that gave me the idea to say how much curvature is there when you fly for an hour. Let's say you're going 550 to 700 miles per hour, however fast you're going. On average, let's say 550 miles per hour. How much curvature do they have to account for in that hour? He didn't know. And so when I gave him the number, he said, no, they don't account for that. They don't have to account for curvature. And he got pretty upset about that question. It didn't seem to make, you know, things better or like um, anything like that. But I told him, you know, that I had been researching this topic for about seven years, similar to him. He said he's been researching it for seven years. And I said, I've come to a different conclusion. I have found footage of the firmament. I have found declassified documents that talk about this thing over a flat, immovable world. There's plenty of them out there. Even NASA documents say that they can assume it's flat and not rotating. Um, but he says they don't have to factor it in because they just basically ride on top of some bubble of atmosphere and it just sits on top of that. And even though the curvature per hour is more than you would take in the half hour to land, and you can feel when you drop for the half hour it takes to land. You can feel that. I've flown many times. I've flown to Australia. I brought that up and how we didn't factor in curve at all. And there's many pilots who believe in the biblical earth. Um, but he didn't. He wanted to change the subject real quick and uh, talked about a few other things. But he was getting very mad. And he would kind of he would refer to me when he would look at other people and say they. They always say this. And they. And. Um, like we're the outsiders or some enemies of their globe cult. I don't understand why he was so angry. So at the very end, I brought up this meme that had been going around where Noah was looked at as a conspiracy theorist. Here we are at this Ark encounter, you know, and he was a conspiracy theorist until all of his fact checkers drowned. And I said, we are going to be looked at as conspiracy theorists until the firmament opens and every eye sees the Messiah when he returns. And that was my closing point. And he just said, you've been bamboozled. Uh, next question. And like turned away from me. He was really angry. So I really didn't get to plant a whole lot more seeds. But miraculously, this young 13-year-old child, little girl goes up there with her family. 
And she tells him that, hey, I feel that the Bible depicts more accurately a flat, non-rotating earth with pillars and the foundation. You know, she's going into it and um, very boldly speaking to this guy. And um, he's just like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> you know, his little um, demeanor was never like, oh, really? I think, you know, you might be onto something. And I was like, no, it doesn't. That's not what that means. And um, just so many things. But the entire um, premise of his, his speech had nothing to do with the Bible, which was what was sad to me. And um, I was, but fortunately, I was able to go and talk to that young lady and her family and and validate and say, look, you're right. You're a wise young young child to believe what you do at your age. And the dad was the one who helped plant seeds to her. And I think that the mother was sort of on the fence, but it, it's really cool to see that there are youth out there that are waking up to this. And, you know, it only took one generation of youth to ruin it for all of us. You had to indoctrinate an entire generation of youth. Their kids are going to believe what they were indoctrinated to believe. It's that easy. And so that's what the enemy has done. And that's why we need to focus on the youth. And that's why I have been feeling led to create lessons and content for them. And I'm so thankful that the Father put that on my heart. I don't have a lot prepared yet. I have the website still underway, and I have standards that I'm still finalizing. But this August, while I'm making my lessons for life science where I'm teaching, I want to be simultaneously making lessons for homeschool. I already gear them towards that. And so if you are interested in joining that, I'm not going to charge a fee this year. Donations are welcome. I thank you for those. They're humbling. Some of you have already supported us. And um, there's somebody who gave us a good donation. I haven't had a chance to thank you. I really appreciate that. It's extremely humbling. And it motivates me. And it helps us pay for stuff. Because paying for a website, I'm finding out this stuff is expensive. You pay money here. And they're like, oh, wait, no, you need to pay money here, too. And it's going to have to be forever or else you lose everything. And so um, everybody wants money. Everybody wants a handout. So I thank you guys for your support on this adventure. I am looking forward and more motivated than ever to putting this stuff together and sharing content that destroys the lives of these people who are deceiving, outright deceiving people into believing what the world says as opposed to what the word says. And so we've got our work cut out for us. It was heartbreaking to see. My wife had to witness this as well, and so did our children, the speech that this guy gave. And I hated seeing my wife get upset because I've gone through this all year, you know, working in the science department around people who are Darwinian evolutionists. This is new to her. And so I'm hoping that it shows her and other people how important this is that we undo the damage that these people are doing. You show them why they're wrong and the father is right. We have to peacefully plant seeds. That's the hard part. I know part of us when we're out there and we're hearing these things, we want to stand up and shout at the people. It was hard to remain silent, but we need to be peaceful about this. And the attacks are going to keep coming towards us. And like I told him, we're going to be looked at by most of the world as conspiracy theorists until the waters above the firmament part, because they're not going to come down this time. The Messiah is. And that firmament opens yet again. It's very symbolic, you know, of the waters parting. You think about the Red Sea crossing when they were set free out of Egypt. You think about the River Jordan crossing with the Ark of the Covenant when they were going into the Promised Land. The waters are going to part again, the waters above the firmament. It's a beautiful thing to look forward to. It's it's what we're going to continue preaching, that message of what's to come. Getting everybody ready is extremely important. The alien nonsense is being ramped up as usual. I'm seeing more news come out about that. I think they're going to deceive the military first. I've talked to somebody um, over the summer. He was in the military. And they are believing it. You know, their radar's picking this stuff up. They're seeing these things, you know, and they're falling for it. And obviously, that's a really good plan is to get people in the military in uniform to fall for it. And then their family's going to fall for it. And then it's going to be on the news. It's it's going to be something that is extremely fear-provoking. That's what we've been warning about. That's what Von Braun said on his deathbed. Not that he was a saint, but it seems to be painting out the way that he said it would. And so keep putting those warnings out there, sharing things like the final card. Uh, we had Mikey Jenny come on. He had a real good documentary about it because he himself had been deceived by the ancient alien nonsense. And when we were staying at places, the History Channel plays that stuff nonstop. So the programming's already there. We've all been programmed to believe that there's the truth out there and that they're hiding stuff. 
which is it's kind of evil genius stuff, the way that they plant these seeds and make it look like it's a mystery and you got to look into it. It makes you fascinated, okay, that they're hiding stuff and people think that they are awakened when they start seeing little uh, declassified documents and things pop up. Okay, so we have to stay vigilant and stay motivated because it is a battle zone out there with the lies everywhere. And I've been fortunate that I've repackaged some of the stuff we do and I put it on other platforms like TikTok and Facebook. And for, you know, whatever reason, I don't want to say it's me, the um, father is sending this stuff out and you're seeing a whole new audience start investigating the firmament and things like that that they wouldn't otherwise. And it's just so powerful. It's life changing for these people. We forget how life changing it was for us sometimes because we've known this stuff for so long. But um, this is exciting things that lead people to the most high it changes the way they act it changes the way they see the world and how they see the father and so it's it's powerful stuff and that that stuff's ignored by people like the ark encounter um owners and the guys i think the the owner is you know they're, they're just real big on pushing the globe stuff and the worldly stuff and it, it doesn't feel like they're just doing it to stay out of that conspiracy theorist narrative it was as if they were directly attacking our beliefs. And so I don't recommend going there. It's expensive and anti-biblical as you can get. I did not feel that there was anything promoting the biblical truth other than the fact that there was an ark and people are thinking about the flood. Um, but it's kind of like looking at the stars. They forced us, you know, hey, look at the stars, make a wish on a star, all these things about stars. But they lied to us about what they were. So getting somebody to look at biblical stuff is not always good. When you're putting a twist on it and uh, making it merge with the worldly wisdom that we've all grown up believing in, and it's the wisdom that goes directly against the Father's wisdom. So um can't say that enough. We really need to stay vigilant, stay ready, and expose as many people as we can to the Father's truth. Endure the persecution. It's not fun being considered a fool, but that's what we're supposed to do. So Again, you guys stay vigilant. I love you guys. I'm so excited to be home and get started on this next chapter of working on not just videos, but the homeschool stuff because these precious children need it. And I'm not going to be able to do as much as I would like this year. This is sort of a trial run to see um, feedback on the content and what all you guys need. Uh, there's websites I want to be sharing and things that other people have shared with me. So I want to compile it, have it in one place and uh, put out really good, easy to understand uh, content and curriculum. So I hope it's a blessing, and I hope we have the Father's guidance in this, and it just takes off so that I can focus on that. That would be a nice thing to do um, for the remainder of our time here is teaching and preaching full-time. And so you guys have been extremely awesome in helping us learn in our growth as believers and truth seekers with all the things that you've shared and the wisdom and the support. So I thank you guys. Thank you to our patrons. I look forward to our patron word studies where we go through different parts of the word. Right now we're looking at the book of Enoch and it's interactive where people can join in or they can just watch the unlisted live video. So if you're interested in that, I want to keep it free. I can send the unlisted videos to anyone who wants them, even if you can't afford to be a patron. Okay, I'm not trying to exclude people or buy people into our word studies, but we have to limit it. So that it's not too overwhelming. It's not going to be something where we have so many people trying to talk that it gets too crazy. So we try to find ways to keep it um, the numbers down a little bit. But if it grows, so be it. Uh, not afraid of growth. We'll see what happens. But anyways, I love you guys. I just wanted to update you on the Ark Encounter and just say that I was very sad. And it's something that angered me and it made it really hard to sleep. I could not sleep last night. I kept getting angry, picturing how that guy was speaking about us and um to other people around it was it was extremely hard it's like you want to you want to fight for your family because you guys believe these things and they're talking about you they're talking about me my wife my children and it, it was just hard to witness and very sad so pray for those people pray for the guy that was speaking pray for the people that were listening and anyone that heard some of the points that i was making before i left and even the points that, that little uh young girl was making very very awesome points that she made and so um Again, I mean, just pray for these people, pray for our enemies. It's hard to do. These people, they don't deserve it, but we didn't deserve what we've received. Remember that. Don't forget that. Stay humble. And uh, remember also that the humble are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. 
not the ones who know the most about everything, but the humble, <laughs> the ones that are humble are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So that's like you guys. That's why I love seeing you. But uh, we'll be back soon. I love you guys. The Father loves you. Stay safe and stay ready.